Hello, I'm Steve Nunn, President and CEO of The Open Group. Welcome to Toolkit Tuesday, where we highlight the various components and leading experts of the Architects Toolkit, a collated portfolio of the most pertinent technology standards for enterprise architects. During the series, I'll be calling on a number of recognized experts who will bring their particular insights on how to most effectively use the various tools in the Architects Toolkit. We'll have a mix of interviews, panel sessions, and pre-recorded presentations along the way. While all standards of the Open Group are designed so they can be adopted independently of one another, the greatest value for an organization can be derived when they're used in unison. The sum of the parts should be greater than the whole. In the Architects Toolkit, we have collated a portfolio of the most pertinent ones for architects together, all in one place. For most of these tools, certification from the Open Group is also available, so practitioners can demonstrate that they have the skills required, and recruiters can take the guesswork out of the recruitment process, all backed up by our Open Badges program. So, guidance should have a sensible opposite. So let's take architecture principles as a form of guidance. Is the opposite a sensible decision to take? Um, and what do I mean by that? So many places have architecture principles and I, and I personally think they can be highly valuable in providing guidance for decision-making. Um, and I like to structure them uh, as per TOGAF with you know a name and a description uh, and a rationale that gives you some idea of, of why uh, so you can understand the purpose and the implications, you know, what are the consequences if you follow it in your decision making. But most importantly about principle is that the opposite has to be a sensible course of action. My favourite of all time was to see a principle that said the right tool for the right job at the right time. And I was found myself thinking, as opposed to what? The wrong tool for the wrong job at the wrong time? It, you know, I don't think anyone ever woke up and went, aha, I'm glad I was given that bit of advice. Um, so is there a sensible alternative? Is it even possible? Otherwise, it's not really guidance. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Talk It Tuesday. This is episode 15 of Talk It Tuesday. So we've done quite a lot of these over the last six months or so. If this is your first one, then welcome. If this is not, then welcome back. We're delighted to have you. And uh, wherever you are in the world, I hope you're keeping safe and well. Um, our main topic today is the India Academic Initiative in Architecture, or the Initiate program, uh, and I'll introduce that in a few moments. But uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Paul Homan for his uh, thoughts on uh, enterprise architecture. He always has some uh, great insights and things for us all to think about. So uh, thanks for the latest in the EA Minute series, Paul. Great stuff. Um, couple of things before we start. Um, our thoughts are obviously with the people of Ukraine at the moment and uh, please join me in uh, wishing and praying for a swift end to the tragedies that are occurring in that country. Um, life has to go on uh, obviously and uh, uh, but uh, our thoughts are very much with with the people of Ukraine as I'm sure yours are. Uh, a quick housekeeping item. Um, here at the, in the Open Group at Toolkit Tuesday, we do questions through the QA channel here on the WebEx tool. The QA channel, not the chat channel, please. QA channel, you will find, if you click on the three dots in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, that will give you an option to open the QA channel. Just click on it and that box will open and submit any questions you might have for today's speaker there, please. But please do use the chat channel for communicating with others who are attending the broadcast live or in particular for letting us know where you're joining us from. We love the little messages that say uh, where, where you are in the world um, at the time you're joining us. And uh, I'll kick off, in my case, Sonoma County, California, the real, the real wine country of California, as we say here. Anyway, without further ado, I will uh, introduce our uh, main speaker today, uh, 
and it's a pleasure to introduce a colleague of mine here at the Open Group, Dr. Palab Sahar, who is General Manager for India for the Open Group, as well as our Chief Architect for Southeast Asia. And he's also the President of the Association of Enterprise Architects in India. Dr. Saha has been identified as a thought leader by IBM Smart City Connect and featured by Forbes magazine. He is a Mayati NEGD senior lead expert in enterprise architecture and a visiting professor of digital architecture at the Inst Indian Institute of Management. Dr. Saha advises various ministries and states on matters pertaining to government-wide architecture initiatives. So a warm welcome to Toolkit Tuesday, please, for Dr. Palab Saha. Over to you, Palap. Thank you, Steve, for the great introduction. And a good day to all of you from wherever you're joining. Uh, this is a very interesting session that we're going to talk about today. And as Steve was introducing it, it's called the India Academic Initiative in Architecture. Uh, let me just uh, share my slides, you know, and... I'm just getting my slides here. So I think it should work now. Let's see. Yes, I think you can see my slides now. Um, as I was saying, this is a very interesting initiative. We are about to launch on the 9th of April, but I think this is a good opportunity for the India team and particularly me to talk about it, at least to look at the overall vision, the objectives, what are the foundational pillars? What is the scope of this initiative? The guiding principles, some activities and benefits. So as Steve was talking during the introduction, this is the academic initiative in architecture. And I'm going to provide a few slides which summarizes what we have in mind. And obviously, as you would understand that because this is going to be launched in two weeks time and over time, things might develop. So this is a work in progress and things can change over time as the work group uh, gets into uh, its practice, so to speak. So talking about the initiate, uh, let me set some context. I think we all understand that over the past five to seven years, there is a huge demand supply gap for enterprise architects, which is corroborated by these numbers and by these statements uh, by you know, entities like Gartner, like the Harvard Business Review, the World Bank, McKinsey, and of course, the university's uh, grants commission here in India. So as you can see on this slide, my intention here is not to read everything about it, but it does talk about the need to train enterprise architects and more importantly, to introduce enterprise architecture as a formal subject in our graduate and postgraduate level uh, courses and programs. So if you see the there was a you know paper published by the Harvard Business Review just a few weeks back, you know, as late as December of 2021, where it talks about the need for MBA programs to be updated so that they are suited to the digital era. And if you read that paper, it does talk about the need to teach enterprise architecture. Uh, same thing with uh, McKinsey. You can see that there, you know, the the need for architects is there and this is being corroborated and this is being further supported by the fact that today if you uh, i'm sure all of you are familiar with the gartner hype cycle so this is the gartner hype cycle 2021 for enterprise architecture and you see today enterprise architecture as a discipline as a, is at a nice spot it is getting to a point where it is useful it is going to become productive and it is going to deliver value to the organizations and we all understand the past two to two and a half years because of the pandemic, there is a lot of emphasis on digitalization and digital transformation. This brings us to the point where the value or, and the influence of enterprise architects has improved. And we know that for sure because there are many you know, surveys done by entities like McKinsey, like IDC, like Gartner. They talk about the value of enterprise architecture where they where they you know they are no longer assumed to be just useful but they are taken as trusted uh, i would say internal advisors to become to becoming more influential within the organization and this is the picture which kind of in my view nicely captures what we are talking of the value of enterprise architects in the context of the digitalization and the digital transformation that we have seen at least accelerated in the last two to two and a half years as a result of the pandemic, which I think all of us would agree with. So with this context, what we thought is it's important, therefore, for us to 
introduce architecture as a subject at postgraduate levels. And I think we realize that this is something that would require us to bring the industry and the academia together because it's important for us to deliver design, develop and deliver courses that are industry relevant for academic consumption, which is very important. So this is the formal universities and academic institutions. It provides, it should provide a platform for industry and academia to collaborate so that we can further and advance the discipline through projects, through applied research. It should encourage the students to pursue a career in architecture. Now, a lot of you are architects and we all understand and we all agree that we have become architects because we have practiced architecture as a profession, as a discipline on the job. We didn't quote unquote learn architecture formally. Most of us did not learn architecture formally during our master's degree or you know whatever education you have. So this is something that we want to address through this initiate uh, program. We also intend to enable capacity building activities, especially at the universities, at the academic institution level, because this is where the faculty members, the teaching resources are available, and therefore they can be bolstered through the body of knowledge that already exists. So what we have done here is we have identified the six foundational pillars of the uh, initiative. They are the six C's, as you can see on the right of your picture, uh, ranging all the way from curriculum to career design to credentials, which include certification, to making the courses contemporary, to, you know, to encourage collaboration between industry and academia, and also to give back to the community. So with those three things, we have come up with certain benefits and certain activities. Let's look at what those activities are. So these are the concerns that we hope to address through these initiatives. And I've taken all the three key stakeholders. One is, of course, the industry and a potential employer. So the employer are, employers are asking the question, where are we going to get the next generation of enterprise architects from? How do we groom and nurture enterprise architects within the organization? What institutional and organizational steps are we putting in place to create a career track for enterprise architects? What should universities do to improve the quality and quantity of enterprise architects? And how do we support the universities in addressing supply side issues? In creating these questions, we have spoken to industry partners who happen to be our members. We have spoken to universities. We have also interacted with students who may be the potential employees. Look at the universities. How do we create interest in faculty and students? Because this is an applied area, right? So therefore, we have to create interest in faculty and students. And obviously, based on the data that I've produced in the last you know, three, four slides, I think that interest is already generating. So they're asking the question, the universities are asking the question, what support is available for course design, development, delivery? How do we train our faculty and keep them updated? How do we interact with the industry to enrich this initiative? What is needed to calibrate the student expectations? And finally, very important stakeholder in everything that we are doing are the students and the potential or the future employees. What is the career path that the industry is providing? What is the growth prospect? How are the industries supporting the, the industry, the employers, potential employers, supporting and encouraging enterprise architects? How do we make sure that the courses and the programs that are taught you know, in terms of enterprise architecture are industry relevant and they are globally accepted. So these are the, in a nutshell, these are the few questions that we think are important and these are the kind of issues or concerns we intend to address in this initiate program. Now, these are the indicative areas of work you know, flowing from the previous slide. We intend to work on model curriculums, uh, you know, even provide certain pedagog pedagogical tools and teaching aids, uh, some faculty development programs, subject matter content. You know, fortunately, the open group library has so much of content, but it requires a lot of curation because if you just, uh, you know, send a newcomer into the library, more likely that the, that the person will get confused because of the volume, the sheer volume of content that we already have. So which means the work group, the experts in the work group need to curate that content and make it relevant for consumption within the academic institutions. How can we provide mentoring support and guide? How can we have industry academia joint programs, credentials and certifications? We have spoken about that. Uh, skills and competency framework and internship. This is very important because as we know, architecture is an applied field. It's very important for senior architects in the industry to be able to provide internship projects, to be able to provide mentoring to uh, you know, to the students who take architecture as a course in their university. So these are the indicative areas of work. 
as I said, this is work in progress and some of these may get modified, but I think you get the idea between the last slide and this slide in terms of what we intend to do in this work group. Now, what are the benefits? Obviously, if you are coming from the industry, you get to access future job candidates, right? As senior architects, you gain experience in mentoring bright students. Now, a lot of architects are good architects themselves, but do they have the experience of mentoring junior architects? So that's that in and of itself is a skill development. You also have the opportunity to give back to your uh, alma mater where you have graduated from. And, you know, obviously that creates a lot of goodwill and you know good feelings within your institute within your university you can interact with faculty members advance the profession you collaborate with other universities in developing and enhancing contemporary curriculum and obviously you learn what are the institutional steps taken by other organizations that to groom and nurture architects that you can you know incorporate in within your own organization the participation benefits for universities would be, you know, you get a platform to, you know, participate in curriculum design, you build connection with industry leaders, because as I said, this is a platform between the industry and the academia, you, you know, interact with other universities, you become, you obviously, as, as an academic member, you join the architecture forum and you get access to all the activities of the architecture forum, you network with other universities, other faculty members and collaborate within the academic fraternity. So these are the benefits of the universities. Now, obviously we have members who come from the industry, but what we intend to do here is to increase our ecosystem of academic members. Obviously be becoming an academic member comes with its own uh, privileges. For instance, you access all the work and activities of the architecture forum, its body of knowledge, you get access to our curriculum, your academic licensed course material, you get opportunity to build and enhance your faculty capability, so on and so forth. And I have already spoken about the internships, mentoring opportunities, courseware licensing. So I don't intend to get into the details, but obviously the, the slides will be made available to you. The recording will be made available to you. So you can have a look at the, you know, the privileges for universities to work as ac academic members. Now, these are our current members. As you can see, we have members already, some very, very large, well-known organizations who are part of our work group uh, globally. We also have two academic members, and I'm sure over time this is going to grow. So this is just for, uh, you know, just FYI to understand that this is already gaining and generating a lot of interest in the industry in terms of how they can collaborate with the academia to kind of uh, be part of this platform and create an ecosystem of academic courses in the context of architecture. Now, we seek and welcome senior enterprise architects. So when I'm using the term enterprise architects, it includes all variations of roles like business architects, data architects, technology architects, IT architects, system architects, solution architects, platform architects, digital architects, security architects, so on and so forth. So they can be part if you're from the industry you can be part of this initiative program this is a global not limited to just those from india or in india we also encourage universities and academic institutions and faculty members who are going to benefit from this program to be part of this in fact on april 9th which is our launch date we are going to have an event as you can see on the right of a slide which is between 11 a.m and 2 p.m Indian Standard Time. This is the outline of the agenda of the event. So please come and join the event. I'm sure some of you may have already received the uh, emails uh, to register for this event and participate. Uh, here we will have two panel discussions, one industry panel, one academic panel, industry panel led by industry leaders, academic panel led by academic leaders, and also having interaction between the two sides, so to speak, in terms of how the industry can support the academia and how the academia can support the industry. So that's what we have planned in a nutshell on April 9th. There are some principles. We will develop work products that universities can consume, right? That's important. Focus around the six C's, which I showed you earlier. We will leverage the current body of literature, the current standards, current tools, and maintain simplicity. We will use the overall frame of reference. I've shown you the, the 10 different areas of work, so to speak. We will solicit feedback from universities where adoption is undertaken because once they become academic members, they become part of the open group family and therefore they will help us improve the future work products and we will be open to collaboration with other relevant stakeholders and this will happen over time through joint initiatives. I think with that, I finish my presentation. Uh, let me stop sharing.
so that I'll be happy to take any question and answers uh, on this. All right, so I have received uh, two questions, which is, uh, which is, I think, fairly natural and logical to ask. First question is, when we mention the word architecture, is it limited to just TOGAF? The answer is absolutely no. Obviously, TOGAF is a very, very widely used standard of ours globally. But we have used architecture here as an as an umbrella term, which means it could also use the adoption of other standards produced by other forums of the open group. So, for instance, aspects of IT for IT, it could be uh, security architecture, it could be, um, you know, architecture in the commercial aviation sector. I'm just giving you some examples. While there are, while TOGAF is definitely the primary framework, it is also open to other standards and other guides produced by forums which have a heavy architecture component. And that is what we want to do. All right. And the second question which I have received is that, which is, which is, I think, I think it's a very great question because the, the name is initiate and you can see India there, is it limited to India? So the answer is yes and no. So our intent of doing this was to first start off in India, get to a, uh, you know, a relevant critical mass and then open it up for global acceptance because, you know, so that's, that's, that's what we have done at this point we have discussed in the work group level however keep in mind that any work product that comes out of this work group uh, will be available in the open group library so let's assume that i'm giving you an example let's assume that there is a model curriculum for an mba program right which is produced by this work group now that is part of the open group library so even though it is produced by this work group it is available to all universities across the world so that's why i said it's both yes and no so eventually we would like to make it global, but we want to start off with India and then eventually grow it up with as, as we reach the critical mass. So these are the two questions I got. Are there any other questions? Okay, I'm seeing the questions in the chat channel. So I hope I can take that. So let's see, there is, uh, Okay, so the one question that has come up is that do I need to sign up for the initiate program? So if you are from the industry and your organization is already a member of the open group, any forum, you can just join the work group. Nothing else is needed. You know, uh, just contact us and we'll be happy to make you part of the initiate program. If you are from an organization which is not a member of the open group, then your organization needs to become a member of the open group, any forum again. But if architecture forum, so be it. And then you can start, you know, you can participate in the initiate program. If you are coming from an academic institution like a university, as I showed you in one of my slides, your university has to become an academic member of the open group, which is at a much reduced fee. OK, and then you can participate in the initiate work group. Okay, I don't see any other question. Let me quickly go through. Yeah. Yes. So as I said, if, if your organization is already member of the open group, there is absolutely no problem. Just just reach, reach out to us and we'll take care of, uh, you know, including you in the work group. All right, looks like there are no other questions. As I said, the slide deck and the recording uh, will be made available to you. And uh, OK, the, the last question which I get is how to register for the April 9 event. As I said, uh, in, in, if you go to our website, it's already published there. And otherwise, uh, you know, just reach out to us. We'll send you the registration link. OK, I think we have addressed all the questions. So. Are there any other questions? Do we have? Ah, OK. Uh, as I said, so the question here is, do we have a timeline for any curriculum or academy resources launch for initiate? Yes, there is a timeline. But again, it's a member driven activity. I've shown you the members, current members in one of my slides. Uh, it means that the members have to come up with a timeline and a project plan in terms of what we want to do in terms of creating a model curriculum and talking to the universities. So that, that's the way it is, right? Yes, there is a timeline. We want to achieve something concrete 
uh, within this year, you know, at least a model curriculum and some kind of supporting for mentoring and internships. But again, uh, you know, the, the members will also take a call in terms of how much time they can contribute to this work group and take this forward. Okay, so looks like I have covered all the questions. There's nothing else pending unless I've missed. Uh, yeah, so let me hand this over back to Steve. So Steve, back to you. Thank you, Peleb. Great stuff as ever. Thank you very much for your uh, presentation and also the uh, the uh, Q&A session today. So um, uh, thanks very much for doing that. And thank you to all of you for joining us today. Uh, don't go away just yet. Um, uh, I do just want to tell you a little about the next uh, episode of Toolkit Tuesday, which will be uh, two weeks from today. And we will be Cycling back to some of the questions that we've had uh, over the last uh, 15 episodes, as it is now, and uh, some of the ones we didn't get to. Uh, so uh, please join us again in two weeks where we will we will go back to some of those questions with a panel. And uh, it, we'll, we'll also have a chance to, uh, for you to ask some other questions uh, live on the day and uh, it promises to be a, a, a very informative session. So please join us again in two weeks time, April 5th, for episode 16 of Toolkit Tuesday. Meanwhile, thank you from me, Steve Nunn, and keep safe wherever you are in the world. Thanks for joining us. Bye for now. <laughs>